Okay, in this video, we're gonna have a look at capture, recapture. So the question we're gonna have a look at is shown here on the screen. So you can always feel free to pause the video, have a go at this question, and then we'll be going through it. Now, before I go over this question, I am just gonna quickly show you where you can access more of these types of questions right within the video. So when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download, and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description, you'll see down there, it says topics featured in this video. So in there, I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it'll take you on to more practice questions and different versions of this topic. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay then, so having a look at capture, recapture. So in this question it says, Shirley wants to find an estimate for the number of bees in her hive. On Monday, she catches 90 of the bees. She puts a mark on each of the bee and returns them to her hive. And obviously at this point, we don't know how many she has in total because this is how many she's actually looking for. It then says on Tuesday, she catches 120 of the bees and she finds that 20 of them have been marked work out an estimate for the total number of bees in her hive. And remember here we are just finding an estimate, but we're gonna do that by using some proportion. So we're gonna start by having a look at the first capture. So on the Monday, she catches 90 of her bees, but of course we don't know how many there are in total. So if we were to write that as a fraction, we would be able to say that in this capture here, she caught 90, put a mark on all of them, out of we don't know. So that number that we don't know, we'll use a letter for. I'm gonna use the letter X, but you could use anything. So it'd be 90 out of X. And that X number there is what we're gonna try and figure out because that's the total amount of bees in her hive. Now on the Tuesday, she catches 120 bees and she finds that 20 of these bees have been marked. So in terms of the second capture, thinking about how many bees have been marked, 20 out of 120 have been marked. Now there are lots of different ways to then have a look at this following step. So if you have a different way, that's absolutely fine. Please feel free to leave a comment in the description. And let me know if you like a different way. Now what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna say, okay, well, if these two samples are equal, so let's just set them equal to one another or they are in proportion, we could say that 90 over X has to be equivalent to 20 over 120. So if they have to be equivalent to one another because they should be in proportion, the amount of bees that have the marks on, then we just need to figure out how we're gonna create an equivalent fraction. So what fraction, 90 over something, is equivalent to 20 over 120? Now we can figure that out by figuring what do I have to multiply 20 by to get to 90? So the working out that I could do for that, I could just type into my calculator, 90 divided by 20. And if I type that in, 90 divided by 20, we get the answer 4.5, which means that I have to multiply the numerator by 4.5 to get from 20 to 90. Now if I do the same thing with the denominator, multiply that by 4.5, that would create an equivalent fraction. So to work this out, my final step to get that denominator, and bearing in mind that X value there is the total number of bees in her hive that we are estimating, I just then type in 120 multiplied by 4.5, and we can do that on the calculator, and we get a final answer of 540. So our estimated value for the total number of bees in the hive would be 540. There are other ways of approaching this, and if you have a different method that you prefer, that's absolutely fine to use, but this is the method that I tend to use by equating these equivalent fractions. But there we go, there's our final answer. Now in finding that answer, we do make some assumptions. 
particularly with this real life scenario where we're looking at bees in a hive. So we make sort certain assumptions such as we're going to assume that none of the marks have rubbed off in between the days. We're going to assume that no, none of these bees have died. We're going to assume that they haven't emigrated somewhere else, moved to a different hive, and that also other bees haven't immigrated into the hive. So we have lots of different assumptions that we can make, and there's obviously others that you could make as well, but there's just some examples. Now the part B in this question touches on that, but it asks it in a slightly different way. It doesn't ask us for our assumptions. It says here, Shirley assumes that none of the marks had rubbed off between Monday and Tuesday. If Shirley's assumption is wrong, explain what effect this would have on your answer. So as we are going to explain what effect it has on our answer, it's either going to go up or down. So if we think about this, if some of the marks had rubbed off, then in the scenario here where we found 20 over 120, well, if some of the marks had rubbed off, that 20 should have been a bigger number. So that 20 could have been, I don't know, let's just say 30. So if it was 30, how would that change our answer? Well, to get from 30 to 90, instead of 20 to 90, we would have multiplied by three. And therefore we would have multiplied the denominator by three. And if we did that, 120 wouldn't have turned into 540, it had turned into 360. So if some of the marks had rubbed off, that second sample, more of the bees would have had marks on, and therefore our answer would be smaller. So in that answer to part B, we would say exactly what, how it affects our answer, as it says, explain what effect this would have on your answer to part A. So we would write something along the lines of, our answer would increase, okay? As more of the marks had rubbed off, therefore, okay, in our working out here, we would have multiplied 20 by a larger number, and therefore 120, by, sorry, by a smaller number, and therefore 120 wouldn't have been as large. It wouldn't have gone to 540, as, as in our little example there, it might have gone only to 360. So our answer would decrease, or our estimate would decrease. Okay, so there is our answer to this question, looking at capture recapture for these real life examples. Now there are other types of examples on capture recapture as well, and if you want to find them, you can go into the description and you can find the full lesson on this topic. So I hope you found that useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.